Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page, and please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Bill Ringel about five secrets to effective delegation for small business leaders. Bill Ringel, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Such a pleasure to be with you, John. It is a pleasure to be with you. You're joining us from the Philadelphia area. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about delegation. You've put a lot of time and effort into this. You're an evangelist for delegation. We're going to be talking about five secrets to effective delegation generally, but also specifically for small business leaders. And I think this will be a really great conversation for Uh, all of you who are joining us today. As we get started, I wanted to share Bill's bio with everybody. Bill Ringel works with senior managers who want to lead high-performance teams and high-tech companies across North America. He led the worldwide training program at Apple, and his mission is to help overwhelmed managers become admired leaders who can grow and scale companies by mastering focus, integrity, delegation, and systems. And I could go on and on with all the great accomplishments that you've achieved over the course of your career, but I'm going to pause there and give you a chance to share and highlight anything you would particularly like to um, share with the audience, and then we'll dive on into the conversation. Here's something that I think a lot of people don't know, John, is that delegation and management operate in a way that people think is very different than other activities, say sports. But coaching in sports is very effective because it's seen by a lot of people. Management is not as effective because people think that it happens internally or it's more hidden. So the more that people can think about developing a great organization, a great team, a a great business unit, the more you can think about as coaching a sports team, the more effectively you'll be able to think about how to help people progress, how to bring people into different positions. Um, One of my favorite movies is Moneyball. If you've seen that, I think you know where I'm coming from. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I love that. Uh, I love Moneyball. Great book, great movie. Um, that's I always tell my students. You know, I'm a university professor. and I do consulting stuff as well. But in the in the university space, I always tell my students like informal homework. It's not part of the class, but you need to watch this movie uh, from an HR organizational leadership systems, you know, an analytics perspective. Man, that's that's where it's at. So Moneyball is a great one. Another one that I was thinking of as you were just doing that introduction uh, is the show Ted Lasso. Um, I don't know how many uh, individuals listening are familiar with that show. Fantastic show in and of itself. It's hilarious. It's just a really great show. It's inspiring, you know, all those things. So it's a great show in and of itself. But from an HR and leadership perspective, uh, I think it's a tremendous example. And it kind of bridges what you're talking about because you have this guy who has never taught, has never coached soccer in his life, doesn't even know the game, who becomes, you know, that the the head coach of a professional um, soccer team in the UK and has to figure out how to successfully lead that team. And so you have all these undercurrents going on throughout the show that are just fascinating from an OB leadership, OD change management kind of a perspective. So anyways, those are two uh, two suggestions over the, the holiday break. If you have a moment and you're not watching Christmas movies or other uh, family movies, watch those two. I think you'll get a lot out of them. And, and I let's just add on an encouragement. Always look for lessons. I mean, there are different levels that you could look at um, every event. I had a great um, teacher, a great professor in college 
his name was Dave Porsche, uh, when I went, was at Rensselaer. And I was um, in his class and he says, great writers approach reading in three ways. And he says, the first way you do it is as a tourist. You go through and you enjoy what's going on and you take in the sights and you're stimulated by it. The second level of great uh, understanding is a, a writer will approach reading as an architect. How did somebody set this up? What was the structure? What led to that being such a, a satisfying ending? And then the third level is as a thief. <laughs> he says, what are the elements that I want to borrow, adapt, and adopt in my own writing? So I always remember that I think about that as someone who designs courses and leadership trainings and stuff like that as well. You want to be able to look at things at different levels. And everyone listening, I encourage you to look at movies and shows from the perspective of your professional role, because they're great examples. They're great things to be able to talk about. It's not just wasting time when people say, hey, what, you know, what, can you believe what happened on that last episode of such and such? It's a great opportunity to reinforce good points. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's the sticky stuff, right? Those are the things that we remember. Um, and so, you know, you can go to a lecture and I can talk about theory and I can throw out names and dates and and I can map out a theory and all those sorts of things. But it's the sticky stuff of storytelling that happens, you know, in pop culture and movies and TV shows and other forms um, that you know, that can resonate with us that allow us to then apply what we're, what we're seeing and see how it fits in with our lives. So yeah, I just, just a, a second to everything you just said, uh, th this is a great way. This will be our last episode of the year. And this is a great way to lead into the new year, uh, and, uh, enjoy the, the break, enjoy the vacation, uh, enjoy time with friends and family. And, uh, when you're casually, uh, spending some time and, and relaxing and watching something, also, that's an opportunity for professional development at the same time. Two birds, one stone, right? Yeah. And John, let me share with this um, this idea, because this is one of the key things that makes it really work in a high-performing organization, is that you recognize that there are differences between two critical modes, performing and development. And yeah. they're modes because it's like a light. You can have a light switch on position and up or down in the off position. You can't do them at the same time. And that's one of the areas that really interferes with people developing within an organization is, first of all, people don't plan for the development mode of operation. They only see performing. And many people say, well, just get the result. Just get the job done. Make sure that that contract gets signed. Make sure that that software works at the end of, of the week. And it's all about performance without recognizing that a high performing team sets aside time to develop, to learn, to give feedback, to allow that cycle for people to develop and grow further. And if we could go back to professional sports for a moment, um, you don't have professional teams playing day after day after day, even baseball. And I know the Phillies did really well this year and I'm very proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to have time off to recover. It's part of the cycle. You do performance, you do preparation, planning, uh, development, performance, and then recovery and review. Yeah. And all teams, whether on a sports field or in a you know, workplace, are doing those to one degree or another, and it'll determine your success if you have the right mix and the right balance um, to do those effectively. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I know we've digressed a little bit from the stated core topic of the conversation today, but I think this in and of itself has been a really fun mini conversation within the larger uh, conversation. And uh, now let's go back to talking specifically about delegation. Now, certainly everything we've been talking about could apply to the principle of delegation and how we learn how to do it and, and practice it and coach it and develop that skill, right? Um, but why don't we start with you uh, defining for us what delegation means to you. I mean, it's a term everyone knows the term, and I think everyone kind of has a general sense of it, but I suspect you have a slightly different way of uh, thinking about delegation. And right you would be. <laughs> John, uh, many people confuse or rather mask another D word for delegation, and it's commonly called dumping, <laughs> which is, oh, we have a new person coming on board the team. Let's see, what are all the things I hate to do? Let's dump that on the new guy. 
And delegation, you have to elevate your thinking about it. And we're talking about being mature and, and saying, I want to create something that's going to have longer lasting uh, contribution to the organization than just me being there and, and telling people what to do as a manager. So when you think to delegate, you think about whether you have um, significant work. So one of the five tips is make sure you understand what the scope of the work is that you're, you're um, involving people with. And there are three different levels I'll give you. One is that there's a task to do. And a task is trivial. It's simple. It's normalize this data set. It's go ahead and find out, um, do a competitive analysis of, of what's going on and help put it into these two slides in a slide deck. It takes between five minutes and five hours, and there's not necessarily a lot of new learning going on there. Then there's an assignment. And I think a lot of people overlook or under-recognize the importance of an assignment. An assignment is more involved, but it's not quite involved or resource intensive as a project. An assignment is your training ground. An assignment is something where you're in, it's the perfect opportunity to delegate. And delegation occurs, let me do a sub uh, category here. Um, delegation occurs when you have three elements in place. You wanna do something significant, you wanna involve others, and you wanna build bench strength. So if you have those three things in place, you can think of assignments and you could always be making assignments to people, making sure you're clear on what the outcome is, you have support there, and you're helping people develop new skills, develop relationships while aligned with accomplishing something that's gonna advance the business department, unit, um, its goals. Yeah, and if we can pause there for just a minute, uh, I wanna double click on the dumping D word that you mentioned, because I think you're right. I think that's often what it becomes. And you think of, I need, I'm, I'm a busy man, you know, I'm leading a big team, a division, whatever, uh, and I need to free up time. And so I'm going to have other people do all the stuff about my job that I hate, all the stuff that I don't want to do. And I'm just going to dump it on them and I'm going to, to load it on them. Now, can there be some development, some learning that comes through the dumping process? Sure. I mean, you're, you're, you're having someone do work that, you know, perhaps they're learning something from it. But generally speaking, is that going to be rich development opportunity coming from the dumping? No, it, it's not. It's it's the menial tasks. It's the stuff you don't want to do. Uh, and when you just give it to other people, you know, they, they get annoyed, bitter, you know, uh, frustrated. They, fe they know that they're being dumped on. It, they don't feel valued, et cetera. Like, so there's all these negative outcomes that can come from the dumping. Does it free up your time? maybe in the short term, but in terms of, of the long-term development growth and the bent, developing the bent strength of your team, it actually is going to end up costing you in the long run. Um, and so we got to be really careful with this dumping that I think is just super common. And many leaders feel like it's their prerogative, like, hey, I'm the one in charge, uh, do what I say. I don't want to do these things. It needs to get done. You do them. Uh, of course, everything there are things that need to get done that nobody wants to do. Uh, so there will be times where you're going to ask well, people to help with those things, but you need to be willing to roll up your sleeves and do those things too. So I think that's something that also is a, an assumption that I'm going to challenge. And I'm going to take the perspective of working with someone who is new to a company. We're normally I'm working with people who are senior managers or managers of managers. Someone who's new at a company, if you adopt the um, perspective of always looking for whatever happens in life happens for you, not to you. You could really turn that around. Um, so two things there. One, if somebody says, here, I need all of these um, slides organized and put into our common drive, but organized by this category and tagged in a different way, was it something that I had a conversation with a couple of weeks ago? And if the person looks at it and says, this is an opportunity, not just that someone's dumping something on me, but I get to shine. I get to show my organizational skills. I get to make this into something. And here's how, if, if you're listening to this and you're thinking, my gosh, my manager keeps giving me things that are trivial. In order to show that you've taken this to a new level of um, responsibility, make a document, an SOP. Here's how we do this. So if this is something that someone's dumping, giving you this organizational task, return to your manager, say, here's what I did. Here's how long it took. And I also spent a couple hours making this document so that if you need anyone else to do it in the future, they only need to follow these outlined steps. And then the third thing I'd push back on, John, is I'd say, if you assume that nobody wants to do it, 
you're not looking closely enough at the talent, skills, and interests of the people you're working with. Because every task has someone who gets really excited about it. <laughs> Think about the things you don't want to do or I don't want to do. I, I don't want to. So for instance, when we moved into our house here outside of uh, Philadelphia, I said to my wife, I love the property we have. It is a gorgeous property. However, I am not involved in the sport of competitive landscaping. <laughs> so I will not mow our lawn. <laughs> we will get good people to do it and they will take care of it. And that'll be great. I give them a budget and they work with it. Other people, they like my father loved mowing the lawn and he would look at it in just such you know microscopic ways. It's not a thing that I'm interested in or take any pride in. I just want it done. I don't want it to be an issue. And if you realize that there's someone out there who loves to talk about these things, loves to involve themselves, loves to build skills in those areas, you'll be much better at managing and delegating because you'll find a good fit between the, the talent you have and the work that needs to be done. Do you agree with that? Do you think that there's some some valid? Yeah, validity no, there? I think you're I think you're absolutely right, and it, it speaks to the importance of knowing your people, knowing their talents, their abilities, understanding where they're at in their career and life stage, and what interests them, and where they want to go with their career, and the type of growth that they're hoping to achieve in the job. Uh, all of that, I think, is important, and that only happens, you know, you only know that if you talk with your people, if you have regular check-ins, and you have those coaching conversations on a regular basis. Uh, so I absolutely agree with that. I, I do think there are probably some things that very few people like to do, uh, and so sometimes you have to buckle up and just get stuff done sometimes, and that's okay. Everyone knows that that's part of your job, but if it's like 100% of your job or 90 or 80% of your job where you're just doing stuff you hate doing – and you don't want to do, yeah, then you're that's not going to lead to engagement and productivity and and innovation, right? So so alignment is absolutely key, as you were suggesting. You can only have that alignment if you know your people really well. I'm reminded of something that a colleague of mine said when I was at Apple. And Fred told me one time, you know, these mentoring moments that occur. Um, Fred said to me, he says, there will always be up to 20% of your job that isn't going to excite you, isn't going sure. to um, delight you isn't going to be your thing. But if you could figure out how to make at least half of your job doing the thing you love, it really doesn't matter. And we were talking yeah. about like filling out um, travel and expense reports at that point. It's like, yeah. oh man, I, I forgot to get it on Friday. He says, just make an appointment with yourself to get those things done. So then it doesn't become an issue with your manager. It just becomes something it's non-issue and you get to focus more on the things you love to do and that you could really make unique contributions in your organization with than tripping over things that you just yeah. don't like that, that you were talking about that we all have. Yeah. And the other thing you mentioned uh, that I think is, is really port important is regardless of the dumping that may or may not happen, I, as the dumpy, you know, if I'm receiving the dumping, I do have a choice on how I approach it. Uh, I can either get bitter because I'm being dumped on repeatedly, uh, or I can, I can be proactive and try to shape that into a development opportunity. Now, in an ideal world, you're going to have a boss who, even if they're giving, you know, you broke it down into those three uh, types of areas. Um, I, I forget what you called the first one, uh, but you kind of have the menial tasks yes. and then you, and, the assignments tasks, and then project. assignments, and then projects. And, you know, sometimes you do need to delegate and assign, you know, you have to give those tasks to people to do. But if if that's the case, make sure that you're reframing it as an assignment or a project <laughs> for your person. So if you're saying to your example, you know, do this slide deck X, Y, Z, whatever, um, rather than just saying, hey, can you go through, you know, and do these, these basic, really simple little things. Hey, can you really take a good deep look at this? Can you see how we can enhance this and, and, and elevate it into an assignment or a project? Um, and a good leader will do that, even for those more menial types of tasks that you might want to have someone do. And therefore, it becomes a development opportunity. Now, that said, a lot of times leaders don't do that. And so if I'm the one receiving the, the dumpage, you know, from someone else, Hopefully, I will be proactive in and how I receive that, and whether they frame it that way or not. Hopefully, I'll take the initiative to make it into an assignment or a project, uh, and really wow them. You know, over deliver on what they asked you to do, uh, and you, you're developing your skills. You're you're um, showing your boss what you're made of. You're you're uh, you're positioning yourself for future assignments and projects and other opportunities. Uh, I completely agree with that. And, and here, let's just think this through one more level. 
there was a fellow, um, Paul, who was working in a, a cloud-based area of a, a larger company. And he um, had someone who over-delivered like this. And what did Paul do is he started bragging about it. He started showing other managers as well as his boss. That raised the guy who reported to Paul. It raised his visibility in the organization. And in a matter of three months, you know, this guy was continually doing this. He was, it raised his visibility, it raised his stock. And another manager took him away from Paul. <laughs> Paul came to me when, when he had lost him and said, well, something's going on here. When you do things like this, it only becomes win-win. And the more that you can think about ways to always make whatever happens win-win, you're going to be in a much better position that way. And, and you won't feel like a victim. It won't feel like you're not getting face time. You say, I, I just am going to do the best with whatever I'm given. Yeah. And the caveat I'll make to that, and we ha you have to be careful. Um, so a leader could be tempted to be listening to this conversation and say, well, it's up to them. You know, even if I dump on them, if I have a good person, they're going to, they're going to, uh, make lemon the lemons into lemonade, lemonade and and whatever and so i'm going to keep dumping on them i'm going to keep like es essentially abusing and exploiting them and there are times where people get exploited where they get taken advantage of and i don't want to advocate for that and i don't want people to put up with it either so if you're in a situation where it's a toxic work environment and your boss is taking advantage of you i can think of I, I'm, I'm thinking of lots of like uh, movie examples of this, even based on our previous conversation. If you do that, if that's how you are, you lead, um, those people aren't going to stick around very long. And I wouldn't want them to stick around. I would want them to be looking for other opportunities. Um, the grass isn't always greener, of course. And you're always, you always need to be willing to put in uh, the work to, for the job that you want to have, not the job that you do have. Um, but it, it can get to the, the point where it's so out of balance and you're being taken advantage of. Uh, that it might be time to either have a conversation with your boss to level set or to be looking for something else. Absolutely. And we're talking about people who are in healthy relationships now, yeah. not in toxic yeah. relationships. So if you find that there are elements of toxic uh, communications or lack of respect or lack of integrity with what is going on with your work relationship, by all means, take a step back and evaluate because there's so many choices and ways for you to contribute. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Um, let me just share with you three points that I want to make sure that people, that listeners get from this in, uh, conversation. And one is that everyone is a leader and yes. it's regardless of your title. And the more that you embrace that role of being a leader and thinking about ways to involve people, um, I, I think of a, a conversation that you had with Sheila um, Mormon. Was that her name? A Mormon. couple of episodes ago. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. says, you can't do very much by yourself. And yeah. that is so true. I, I, I was standing up and all excited when I heard her say those words. You can't do very much by yourself. So think about ways to involve people and involve people well. Um, structures help people do things at a higher quality more consistently. So if you want to do that, think about using structures, even though it doesn't, you know, it means that you're not going to trust people to shoot from the hip. More successful organizations and groups are always doing that. And the third point I'd, I'd make to make sure people understand how to effectively work together in a high performing way rather than in a low performing way um, is that you're in a company. And when you're in a company, you're with company. <laughs> so reach out to get the support, feedback, guidance, mentoring yeah. that you need in order to do a work all the time. Um, so those are the kinds of things I want people to think about because they come here looking to learn. And John, you help bring out these points so well. So I just wanted to make sure we got those in um, during this episode. Yeah, I really appreciate that. And I appreciate all of um, these elements of effective delegation that you've been spelling out for us and the examples you've been providing. And I like the distinction between the dumping uh, D word versus the delegation D word uh, and framing delegation around an opportunity to develop bench strength. Uh, it, it is a developmental tool. Uh, that should be coupled with coaching and mentoring uh, and ongoing performance conversations with your team. And as you give people opportunities, you know, to develop stretch, pro you know, stretch goals, stretch projects, things that will extend, you know, them out of their comfort zone, that that's opportunity for growth. And that's opportunity for them to be in positions to step into the next role, right? And help people prepare now for the next position, the next level up. 
um, or, you know, the various types of skills that they may not need so much in their day to day right now, but they might need in a year or two from now. Uh, so let's proactively develop that. Think of and elevate the conversation around delegation. So it's not just about having people do what you don't want to do, or it's not just about, you know, freeing up your time. There's value in, you know, freeing up a leader's time so they can do the high level strategic stuff and they can do the coaching and the mentoring and that kind of stuff. And if you're getting bogged down into all this minutia uh, of, of these tasks day in and day out, you, you need to be thinking about ways to, to, to calibrate and to, to free up your time, certainly. But if we think about delegation in terms of development, another D word, then I think that's where we're really going to get the power from it. It has been a real pleasure. I know at the time I need to let you go here in just a minute, but before we wrap things up, I wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Great. John, I have a special gift for people who are listening today um, where I go through in a little mini class, the delegation framework, and it could be really helpful for people and it's for your listeners. So go to growbusinessnow.com forward slash HCI for human capital innovations. Um, second of all, connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm easy to find, Bill Ringel. <laughs> and third, I have a podcast also, My Quest for the Best. We have over 400 episodes with top thought leaders. And I'd love for listeners of this show, if you like what we were talking about today, to go ahead and sample something over at My Quest for the Best. Uh, love to have you there as well. So Jonathan, it's been such a pleasure talking with you about delegation. And I want you to, to realize and want everyone listening to understand that delegation is the core is the key component to effective um, uh, company growth. You can't have things operating effectively without effective delegation, because it's only when the delegation works that you get that one plus one equals three effect rather yeah. than something else. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Bill, it has been a real pleasure. I encourage my audience to reach out, get connected, uh, check out his podcast, check out the the uh, the micro course, uh, check out all the great things that Bill is doing and his team. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page. And please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.